I mean, and here's the problem, you know. Let, let me let me let me clarify something for some people who do not understand. Every Muslim man, every believing man, has an obligation to follow the direct example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before anyone else. They have that responsibility. We do. Right, so, exactly. now, how is it that we live on that responsibility and then sit back when we know something is wrong and do nothing about it and turn a blind eye on it? Is that possible? It is not possible. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left Medina dozens of times. We see him going on his military expeditions, his Umratul Wada and so on. He always left a male, an imam in charge. He never left a female. What part of this are you all refusing to accept? Right. Right. Exactly. We see other messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They never. You have no right to come up with your own little ideology and call it your belief system and think right. that we are going to sit, just sit idle and do nothing when the right. Quran is clear. Right. You may not have any understanding or enough understanding of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and how he defines it. Because I asked one of the girls, I said to her, this shortest surah in the Quran, Inna a'tayna kal kawthar. Do you know what it means? She said, yes. I said to her, okay, can you tell me what ayah of the Quran you can relate these to? What ayahs of the Quran can you substantiate Inna a'tayna kal kawthar with? I don't know of any. So how can you explain the Qur'an with other than the Qur'an and think that you have something better than the Qur'an? How? Who explains Allah's word better than Allah and then turns around and think that they have better than Allah? That's, that's, okay, this is a fasiq. This is clear rebellion and is not going to, it's not going to stand. What my daughters do not understand is that I met their mother on a condition or under circumstances where the imam, the resident imam, was under serious scrutiny at that time that he brought on himself. And at that time, she was trying to tell me that I needed to turn a blind eye on it. I said, to her, no way. I will have to do exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordains for us to do, carry out. I'm not going to just turn a blind eye and sit back and do nothing. So he was exposed and he lost his job. You understand? And he lost yeah. his job. And later on, of course, you know, we met and we talked and he said, this is what Allah ta'ala wanted. He actually told me that out of his own mouth. He later on uh, went from Richmond to Florida and then to Texas. But he told me out of his own mouth is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. You see, and the same thing we're explaining here. We did not know initially that this is what this guy's rap was about. We had no idea. We thought maybe he was on a very small level. He was being accused of certain things. This was the best that we got. On a very small level, he was being accused of certain things that may or may not have been him. But at the end of the day, he just agreed not to come back to the United States. Well, he couldn't come back. You know, and it took, you know, a lot for me to sit back and do nothing when it came to the greatest miracle of all time being in the building in New York. Oh, brother. You see, it, it took a lot. It took a lot. Ridiculous, you know, and then of that course, was, you know, people want to people want to claim people want to claim also that it is somehow uh, uh, noteworthy of saying that people welcomed you Hafiz, people welcomed until they took the Hafiz building, right? <laughs> until they they demolished. You understand the, the, the morale of the Hafiz class when they called for that retreat. Oh, that people God. practically, you know, came back uh, unusually unstable or somehow. And they never got back to the Quran after that. Never. That was the end of it. Or that, the fact that you claim that uh, somehow I needed to be investigated. 
you think I, you know, like all these things are what zero, nothing, right? Exactly. You know, and then I mean, you know, just see the problem again was that at some point, at some point, I remember I was being asked to go to New York and look at the miracle. At some point, they did ask me nicely. I said to them, I'm, "This is Ramadan, so I just want to finish the Quran over here and stuff like that." That was it. See, and then, uh, so I wouldn't go to finish the thing there. They were like, okay. But the point of the matter is they approached later on. They said, you heard about the miracle. What do you think about it? I said, whoever looks at it and thinks they've seen a miracle, then let them see it. <laughs> you get it, brother? Yeah, but they want you to But wait a minute. Hold on. You see, do you understand the answer, though? Yeah. So I was asked by, you know, one of them, like, what do you say about, you heard about the miracle in New York, what do you say about it? I said, whoever saw it and thinks that they saw a miracle, then let them. Whoever does not, let them. Uh -huh. So that was not convincing, but Al-Quran says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَكْفُرْ Whoever wants, let them. Whoever doesn't want, let them. Right. There's no compulsion in religion. Right. You see, but... These people, you know, they did not take very, very, very good... Because at the end of the day, it does not matter. At the end of the day, it's only the truth that's going to be left standing, nothing else. That's true. You know, so there's no point, you understand, to really be torn up about it. Because you, as one who has been wrong done, who has been done wrong to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take your dua urgent on an urgent basis. It will go directly to Allah. There's nothing the Prophet والسلام, says that is standing between that dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make it and be patient about it too. Remain steadfast in it. Allah will make clear for us that in which we differ. You have no problem, you know. But see, it's not the organization itself, and, and this is the problem. People need to understand. He did orchestrate a very well fortified cult. When you think about it, because as long as you have a handful of families, it's going to grow again. It's going to grow again. That the actual acts, the code itself, it has to be broken. Otherwise, as long as you have Again, just a few, and for sure, it's not going to, it's not going to break until there are just crumbs left. No, it's going to stand, you know. I and think, and I, I, I think the law is not going to let it stand. Mm, Allahu Akbar. Not going to let that stand. Mashallah, the haqq. Allahu Akbar. You don't think Allah is going to let it stand? No. Mashallah, no. Mashallah. Not going to stand, but why? Mashallah, mashallah. It's too much. It's it, yeah, It's too much information out here. Mm. So, you know, it's, like I said, you can fool people when you when you, when you drop out the knowledge from them. Mm. Then you can fool them. But see, and here's here's the here's. They got trouble. Everybody has a trouble. Kids have cell phones. They can go in and look and they can travel all over the internet. All you know, all you know what I would, dollars, you know, if that is the case, if what you're saying is accurate, if that is the case, mm -hmm. the dua that I make is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it and entrust it in the hands of those who are righteously worthy of it. Because I think that, you know, we spend a lot of time discrediting or breaking something but we do not spend enough time in thinking about the aftermath of it and planning about that and i'm really at the point where i feel personally and i'm thinking just looking at the military career of the prophet والسلام, and how you know he prepared his 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 battalions how he prepared them for service in the early days of Medina, Madani period. In the early days of Madani period. 30 here, 40 here, 50 there, 150 there. You know, and then he would leave and he would 
ad, he would administer or he would leave the administrative duties to in so many cases um Maktum, a blind sahaba his second muaddin he would leave him responsible for administering the affairs of Medina. think about that um Maktum was the one that you know uh, abasa wa tawalla was revealed for you know about that where he was asking the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam about Iman and, and things of that nature and the Prophet thought that some nobles were going to be more attentive to him so he turned, you know, as he was talking to them, he was feeling that Umu Maktoum was uh, disrupting him you know, from gaining their interest even more in embracing Islam and that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that, but the point of the matter is that, you know, we have to take on the way of the Shahada entirely and completely so, when our responsibility is due, we will have no blame in that in which we believed. We will have no blame in that in which we believed. And that's the way it's always supposed to be. You cannot just claim something and then turn around and blame your belief for that. You have no right to that. Allah gives evidence, proofs, even in the Qur'an. Allah, the Creator. That's right. I mean, look at this. Similitude of this, similitude of that. The example of this is the example of that. The liking of this is the liking of that. Who do you think you are? Or who do you think your spiritual guide or murshid or whoever is? Who, how dare them think that they're better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right. You see, now... This is clear. This is black and white. This is truth and falsehood. We, everybody who looks at the evidence can tell that this was a fraud situation, clear as daylight. Uh, but the thing, again, the thing is that the, the brothers, you know, the, 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 the R2F, for example, need to structure the organizational structure in accordance with the model of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Otherwise, then, you know, I don't know. I mean, because we have so many problems right here that we are dealing with, that we've been dealing with, that are same, 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 same exact things right here in front of our own eyes. And I'm thinking, honestly, that there needs to be a, loca a locality, you, you know, you have... But well, this is just my thinking, you know, I'm thinking along those lines because even back then when the Hafiz school was there, I was thinking about a musalla at least, a musalla. Somewhere to, you know, really get a fresh look at things and know that this is the platoon, this is the battalion, this is the division, this is the core. You know, we have to have that. We have to have a staff. We must. Prophet ﷺ did not live this, this you know, make-belief model that these people created. And if we, we, see, MJ, Mr. Jilani, he's gone, period. So we can never say, because we used to ask, how is it that things are the way they are? And they'll say, Shah Saab did this, Shah Saab said that, Shah Saab he's knows gone, about yeah. it. Now he's gone. But you have the exact same things happening if we do not prepare ourselves adequately according to the way of Rasulullah himself, then it's, it's all going to be a repeat. People kick out their dictators to replace them with other dictators. Easy. You know? I mean, we have to be mindful about that. And this is the reason why we say to our people, never again. That's the reason why. It's, it's, it, that's why it's a no. We're not going to accept it. Again, if he was involved in business or fishing or import-export, it would not be our, our place to say. But you come to us with this Imam uh, 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 Sultan and, you know, with the, you know, the, 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 the Abdul Qadir Jilani, everything of this nature, and, and you come about the seven sparks that sparked out, you come to us with all of this stuff and you cannot even recite holy quran like you cannot you're not you're not able to utter english you know clear enough for you know the the, the, indiv the individuals to understand even what you're delivering and you claim to be what how the, the reformer 
reformer of the world. You know, it is. There is no way. A lost sinner. No, there is no way. I mean, you know, if that's the case, you're actually. So, if you reform, then you reformed in the worst instead of for the good, because right. you took people out of what you claim to be poverty, and so far today, people are still in poverty. They're in worse poverty now because of the fact that it is a higher cost of living, as a matter of fact. That's right. So what exactly, and then the predictions again, Barack Obama would be the last president, I and know. you understand, uh, Imam al-Mahdi would show up, he's a talib of his, who most people do not understand, and he will be here in a few years. We'll, we'll be eating, we'll be reduced uh, down to yeah. eating grass. Oh, I mean, oh, we're yeah. in the world. Ah. We in the uh, world can one come to the conclusive, uh, you know, he conclusion? Was wolf, he was a wolf and she no, but the bottom line is that wolf, we uh, we have to prepare our center. We have to make it in an organized way. We have to do it in a very very clear as well as passive manner. Unfortunately, people are very brainwashed. People are very, very, very stuck deep down in the mud. And unfortunately, we have the responsibility of being the ambassadors of Rasulullah and being that best of example and being firm on the haqq. One thing about Rasul, he was firm on the haqq and he said when it's time for war, there will be war. He didn't sit back. It's time to make movement. It's time to make movement. It's time to make ijtihad. Amanu wa amilu. Not just believe, but you do. You act upon it. So there is no way on earth that we are just going to sit back and try to water down an ideology that has brought our people from slavery into deeper slavery of understanding. How can you ever justify someone gun hold on something that is as clear as false as night and day? I know. As clear, how can you justify them being silent about living a falsehood ever? And consider that to be some kind of an honor. And think, and think, and think. On no, I'm listen, like but see, you know, it's, but the problem, here's the problem. Let me explain something very, very, very clearly about the problem is the lack of understanding of the Quran. There's a lack of understanding of Allah. When one does not know Allah, Allah says they don't even know themselves. This is the honest truth. And again, when you have the Qur'an, I'm speaking to you with what Allah Ta'ala says. I can show it to you if you ask me. No problem. You know that I can show it to you. No problem. But you say, not for me. I'm more for a bougie. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Think about it. I call the mess now. I'm calling it Shaitan Jilani. It's Jilani Shaitani. No, I have no problem. It is a Jilani Shaitani when you leave the Quran for anything, even if his name was not on it, for anything that you leave in the Quran for, it is Shaitan. So now it's clear. Allah says, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ شْمَعْزَدْ When you mention Allah to them alone, their hearts get what? Their hearts start to get all ill feeling and we don't want to hear this. That's how they are now. When you talk to them about the oneness of Allah, they start to feel animosity. Oh, we're uncomfortable. We don't want to talk. Exactly right. See, this is your, your way of Islam now. This is your falsehood now. This is what you've subscribed to now. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And they view you as a traitor or me as a traitor. Yeah, they but... They actually look at the Muslim brothers as a traitor. No, wallahi wal asri inna al-insana la fi khusr. The human being, here's the thing. The human being, the human being is Allah says, Allah says, Well Asri inna insana la fi khusr, that the human being is completely lost, is without. There's only one exception, those who believe. Those who believe is how they believe what Allah Ta'ala says for them to believe. They believe it according to how Allah said it, not based on anybody else's authority. Allah's way. 
And it has to be that in which he says to believe in. One cannot say that they believe in Allah, but they do not believe in the Quran. Being from Allah is unacceptable. Yeah, then, amilu right. salihat, the righteous deed has to be one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the reason for. It is done upon the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Otherwise, you do not fall in that category. Then you fall in the first category. The fact that you're lost. So we bear patience with them. You have to stand on the truth. You cannot say that you are, you know, infringing on another person's right, but you're on the truth. As much as you want to say, La ilaha illallah and, you know, Sallallahu ala Muhammad or whatever else you're doing. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You have to be in the right. Yeah. And you have to be patient to substantiate the belief itself. The belief is substantiated through patience and they... But the problem is when there's the lack of ignorance, then, or, the, or I'm sorry, when there's the lack of understanding of what Allah said. What is, we have one creator, he sent one messenger, he sent one message, yes, what is it? I don't know. So how are you arguing with somebody who does know? That's, what in the world? How are you arguing about what Allah says and you do not know his message? But Abuji, okay, where's Abuji? I'm sorry. Um, okay, let's look at the video and how much he understands what Allah said in the Quran. And he's not your father, first of all. That's that's a, that's, that's a that's another problem in itself. But the point that's of the matter father. is, the point of the matter is what I'm trying to get you know the people to understand is really Allah has chosen already. Whom succeeds Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's way. And he is the most perfect one to decide. Not me, not you, not Abuji, not anybody else. Allah alone is suffice. And he's already selected. He's already decreed. There's nothing you can do about it. There's not a thing anybody can do about it. And we, if we are really Muslims, we have to stand firm and not relent a single inch. They had no right to defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word. They have no right to do that. They have no authority. And if I were really, you understand, taking it to the, the level, whomsoever is ready, then we will take it there. For sure. We have to take it to whatever... We have given the right to do in order to make clear that we completely disagree and are against this entire setting. This entire structure is unacceptable. Right. Structure, it must go. We have to be able to say this structure must and, go. And, 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 and.